Hello and welcome to PCI's Tech TV. In this episode, we are going to demonstrate haze removal and cloud masking with Geomatica's powerful and highly automated atmosphere correction wizard. In this episode, we will specifically look at a presentation of a gallery of haze removed results, a demonstration of how to use our interactive cloud detection wizard. We will then perform cloud masking and haze removal on a Landsat 8 image, and we'll perform haze removal on a much higher resolution Worldview 2 image. Let's first take a look at a before and after gallery of images that we ran through our haze removal workflow. So if we look here, you can see that we have an Iconos image that has spatially varying haze, meaning that it varies throughout the imagery in terms of its thickness. But you can also see that our scene has a variety of different land cover types. We have forested area, we have barren area, we have uh, a variety of different, uh, different features here. So this is our before image, and then after we applied our haze removal, we get this result. So if we zoom into certain areas, you can see our before and our after. So you can see a very nice result throughout the image. If we look at a Worldview 2 scene that we applied our haze removal to before, you can see that the before image has a significant amount of haze here on the left end of the image, and then it becomes less thick as we move towards the right end of the image. If we look at this, you can see the before and then the after image of running our haze removal. Here's another example of a Landsat 7 scene. Spot 5, so even when we don't have uh, the true color composites, we can still do a nice job with the haze removal. And here's a few other examples as well. So what's nice is that the haze removal gives you an opportunity to get richer data from your imagery, to make use of imagery that perhaps you might not have thought that you'd been able to use before and get value from it. So now let's take a moment and show you how just simple this process is. So I have here a Landsat 8 image and we're going to perform cloud detection and haze removal on this image. So I can bring up our focus by clicking on it in the Geomatica toolbar. Okay, we'll just go back to our Landsat 8 raw imagery. This is as it's distributed by the USGS. We can grab this text file, the MTL text file. We can choose the multispectral image in this case. And we're just going to try to mask out the clouds in this image. So as you can see, we have some cloud areas up here. We want to make sure that we can mask these clouds without getting false positives in the other parts of the imagery, as well as we want to reduce the haze in this scene. So we can just go here to Analysis, Atmosphere Correction, Haze removal and cloud masking. So this is nice because it, it will only apply the haze removal without converting to reflectance. So we still get our imagery back in raw DN values, just with the haze part removed. So we can select our image. And then as you can see, all of the necessary information is automatically set up for you. We'll browse for an output directory. Pull the haze cloud. Close next. We'll do cloud masking. So here, we have the option to set up these parameters. So I can click on settings and it gives us a bit of a preview so we can see what these different settings will produce in terms of a cloud mask. So we can already see here that we have some false positives. We have some non-cloud features that have been masked. So what we can do is we can increase the seed value to help remove this. So the nice thing about this, these thresholds is we have a seed as well as a what we call sort of a growth threshold. And this will allow us to identify the seed allows us to identify what is a cloud and then this one allows it to grow the mask out so what we can do by with this is we can then check over here look at some of our cloud pixels our cloud regions and we can see that we have a nice mask that covers the cloud areas as well and covers the cloud areas relative uh, quite completely another thing we can do is we can also dilate our mask out so we can get some of these little wisp areas as well so what we're looking for is we just want to make sure that We've covered the cloud, but we haven't gotten false positives. So now that we have our settings set, we can move on. And for this, for our haze remove, we're just going to set our defaults, leave them as they are, and click Run. All 
Okay, now that our results are on screen, we can just apply an enhancement to the both of them. Remove our water mask, put our cloud mask on top. So you can see that we did a nice job identifying these clouds. And then if we compare the before and after of our haze results, you can see that we also did a nice job of removing the haze from the image. So now let's move on to another example. So here we have a Worldview 2 raw multispectral scene. Here we're just going to load this uh, IMD file. So this is the raw, the way that the Worldview 2 is uh, distributed. So we'll load the raw IMD file. Just zoom out very quickly. So we can see we have a considerable amount of haze in this area here that we want to remove. So same thing, we can go to Analysis, Atmospheric Correction, Haze Removal. I'm just going to choose our image from the drop-down. Everything, once again, is all set up for us. You can just browse for an output folder. We'll just call this one Haze. Go Next. Cloud Masking, there's really no clouds here that we want to cover. We just want to remove that haze. So we can omit that. And the Haze Removal, here we have an option because it's very thick haze. I'm going to increase this value to a much larger value, such as 85, for example. And then we can run. Sometimes you need to play with this value to find the best result, but the good thing is it's so quick you can try a couple different iterations to see which gives you the best result. Okay, now that this has finished rendering, let's remove our haze mask. Apply our enhancement, and we can see the difference between these two. So the before and the after. And that's all there is to it.